I'm not bitter. I'm never bitter. So Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are talking about vegan meat alternatives and how you are supposed to brand that label that talk about it and I will show you some contrasting opinions and views and I will tell you my own opinions and views. We are also in my bedroom. I'm sitting on the floor. I know it's very dignified um, but it's simply because there is this construction site right below my window in my living room and it's very noisy. So now we are here and I hope I will be able to make this video work. Um, so yeah, that's why everything's just a wee bit different. But I really, really wanted to talk to you about this and to share my opinions. Um, so that is what we're going to do. So for the long intro, now we're here. So let's talk about what is vegan meat alternatives. Meat alternatives that are vegan are generally something that's made out of soy or out of some sort of fungi and they resemble well-known meat and dairy products like vegan sausage or plant-based nuggets or plant-based hamburgers. It's something that I like to use a lot because especially if I'm introducing new people to veganism, it's super neat that I can make something that they know and something that they you know, have some sort of relationship with and they can see that it's still super delicious even though it's vegan. However, it seems that there often is a problem with how vegan meat alternatives are branded and how they are labeled and what they're called. Just today, and this is actually why I'm making this video, um, I logged onto Facebook, as I often do in the morning, and I saw that one of my favorite brands to follow, Natuli, which is a Danish vegan brand, they posted a recipe for a vegan omelette with spinach. It looks so good. And almost all the comments were related to, you can't come out an omelette if there's no egg in it, and you can't say vegan egg because that doesn't exist, and you can't say this and you can't say that. So I started looking into this issue because it's something that I, I honestly find a little bit childish that we even discuss. So the president of a meat processing industry in the EU said this about vegan uh, alternatives to meat. Numerous food shifts suitable for vegetarians or vegans derive their sales from names which relate to meat, animal species, specific meat cuts and all meat products. We believe that this contravenes the rules relating to the clear and unambiguous consumer information. It's a whole thing there. But it is not just a CEO of a meat processing company. It is not just people on Facebook. It's something that has become a huge problem. And my personal interpretation of this problematic, of this issue, is that the vegan consumer group has grown so much over the last few years. And there are way more options now than there were five years ago. And honestly, I think that these meat processing industries are scared. I think they are scared and they are trying in the lowest way possible to protect their uh, income and to protect their territory. And instead of talking about the real issues such as environmental impact and ethics and health, um, they resort to talking about nitpicking and to talking about names and labeling. So especially in the EU, I'm seeing a lot of restrictions that are coming up on vegan products. For instance, in France, they completely banned vegan products from naming any sort of meat-related word. So you can't say vegan hamburger, you can't say plant-based nugget, you can't say soy milk, you have to say soy beverage and soy drink. Also something that is being more and more prominent here in Denmark is that you can't say soy milk, you can only say soy drink because in terms of uh, food, milk is apparently only something that comes from an animal. In the botanic world, milk is also something that comes from plants and you can also get fruit flesh. Those are terms of the botanic world. So I don't know, but I mean everything in the name of profit, right? So really, I actually don't care that a meat processing industry is sort of bot hurt about vegan products. But when I am starting to get just a little bit ticked off is when these people that only have their own profit and their own industry in mind are starting to talk about vegan products as something that's harmful and deceitful. This is something that actually happened. The CEO of British Meat uh, Processors Association called vegan products that are labeling themselves as vegan sausage or soy milk is harmful and deceitful to the consumer. So this is not something that happens in a vacuum and one CEO is bot heard about vegan food. These are arguments that are being used over and over again and they are appearing in ordinary consumers, individual consumers' opinions. And often when I hear this, I, I, I sort of get the feeling that you don't really believe what you're saying. But I get that it's a lot easier just to attack 
a certain product that sort of challenges your beliefs, that sort of criticizes your beliefs rather than just learning and rather than just being open-minded. This is also what we call cognitive dissonance when you are feeling mental discomfort whenever you are presented with opinions that are contrasting to your own and it's something that I think we see a lot with veganism because vegan products like vegan sausage and uh, soy milk is not something that are just challenging meat industries and challenging factory farming and challenging animal agriculture it's also something that are challenging individual people and some people feel even lynched or victimized by vegans um, because we are not only challenging you know, bigger corporations, we are also challenging individual people to change their traditions, to change their norms. Giants off track here. Um, but yeah, you feel. So one of the questions that I get all the time and I see other people struggling with as well is the whole, why do you vegans need meat alternatives? I thought you didn't like meat. Why do you need to go in and make it look like meat when you cut meat off? this whole dynamic and for me and this is something that I tell people also to their faces when they ask me because it's it's not an unfair question for the most part it's just a curious question um, and I usually say that well I cut meat out because of the environmental impact and then later because of ethics and health um, I never quit meat because of the taste and I never quit meat because I didn't like the dishes that had meat in it and being able to make my previously loved dishes and being able to participate in holidays and you know being able to participate in dinner parties and being social around food which is a huge thing for me and for most people is so empowering and it's so nice that you can do that and be vegan it's a way to not alienate yourself completely from the people that you love around you because something that dawns on me sometimes is that I have a belief that every life including the chicken that is chicken nuggets now sadly has a value and has a life that needs to be valued and I do not necessarily share that belief with all people around me and that can be so terrifying and horrifying to think about so being able to have a vegan burger a vegan hot dog with my friends is something that makes me feel just a little bit less alienated from them does that make any sense also another thing that when it comes to vegan Megan. Megan. Another thing with meat alternatives is that it's such a great transition food because lots of people still have this idea that vegans only eat salad and quinoa and it's fine because it's also delicious but we also eat french fries all the time. I mean I do. Um, and it's just a really really great way to be curious about vegan food and to try something out and you can try all these different products really really great. And they are great transition foods. I know tons of people who aren't even vegetarian who use vegan minced beef um, in their spaghetti bolognese or I mean these things. It's great. You're being curious about it and not killing animals. I love it. I support you and your cause. So there's that. It's a great transition food and it makes you feel less distant from the people around you. There's no bad things. So the next question is this whole video. Why does vegan food have to have names that's related to meat and dairy and eggs? We name food because of their specific purposes in a dish. That is why we don't say we eat pig, we say we eat pork. We don't eat a cow, we eat beef. We have different words for the animal and the flesh and how we use the flesh. And no one owns these words because language is funny like that. Language changes all the time. And I don't think there has any, ever been a point in history where people haven't been a little ticked off about new expressions. <laughs> I mean, always. I think there was some caveman who said, what is this new thing I call the wheel? What is this now? I mean, people have always been super defensive about the things they know in contrast to the things that are new and foreign. Um, so I'm not going to shit on everybody's opinions, but I'm just saying it's really, really natural. And we just need to, to battle this with knowledge and information and rational thinking. In my humble opinion, I don't think anyone has ever bought a vegan nugget with the purpose of eating a chicken. I don't think that has ever been a misunderstanding because vegan products are usually very upfront about not being meat because that is their whole idea, that is their whole value. Um, and the reason why they call it nuggets then and not 
weird fried soy bits is because it is replacing the nugget. It plays the role that the nugget would have played and it looks like it, it tastes like it and it acts like it in texture and it describes perfectly what you're supposed to do with it because if I got a bland grey packet with soy fried bits I wouldn't exactly know what to do with it and I wouldn't maybe be so inclined to purchase such a product but getting vegan nuggets I, I see for my inner eye and my inner foodie I can use that on pizza, I can use that in stir fries I think it's nitpicking when it comes to this very very important issue and it takes a lot of focus away from the fact that animal products are extremely harmful and vegan products are not harmful and who is really interested in that discourse? So the meat industry is not going to let this debate fall flat and they're not going to let this um, discourse go away because what it's doing is that it's stigmatizing vegan food as fake food and no one is going to buy fake food and thus they will continue to have a large portion of the consumers and that is what they want. So this last bit is going out to meat eaters and people who uh, use dairy and animal products and hello and welcome to this channel. There's also stuff for you here. You are also welcome even though you eat meat and hopefully you can get some inspiration to start a greener lifestyle because no judgment, no shame, we are all one big happy family and happy and welcome. Yes, what sometimes is, is happening as I see it is that people are looking towards an industry, defending an industry that thrives on obesity and heart disease and cancer and they are proud of it and to me that makes no sense whatsoever. I would love to have really great rational discussions also with people who eat cheese and dairy and meat but I don't want to answer to these questions every single time because it's not the real issue and we need to talk about the real issues here and not what we call things, not if we call it da blah, I mean it doesn't really matter. I hope that you liked this video, if you did leave me a thumbs up that would make my day and also you can of course always follow me on my social media accounts, everything is linked down below. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, without you this video was not possible so thank you. I hope to see you guys in my next video and take really good care of yourselves, until next time, bye!